if you're a business owner, right? I have a lot of entrepreneurs, mostly all entrepreneurs that are listening in. We never let lack of funds be the reason why we're not going to invest in something. We just go, oh, I'm just going to figure out another 10 ways to make money today. That's the way that our brains work. So amazing. Hello and welcome back to the show. Today's going to be an educational podcast. So if you're, you know, driving right now or you're listening during a workout, you're going to want to re-listen to this episode and take notes. Yay. And if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, take notes. So everyone wants to be rich, but not everybody wants to take risks. Will you be the one? Will you be the risk taker in your family? Will you be the one to say, you know what? No matter what, I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to go all in on my dreams. And I understand that it's going to take taking a lot of risk in order to actually achieve my dream. If that's you, keep listening. 1% of the world holds more wealth than the other 99%. That's crazy. That's a crazy statistic. I mean, that 1% of the world was willing to take risk. Are you willing to take a risk with your money? Today, we're going to focus on understanding what type of investor you are and the different asset classes that are available to you as an investor. You're an investor no matter what. You're investing time right now to listen to this episode. You're investing your time. You invest your money. Every time you go to the grocery store, you're investing your money in either health or death. You get to choose. You're investing in that. So let's talk about what your risk tolerance could be. How do you figure out what your risk tolerance is? So I believe that Depending on where you are at in your life right now, what your financial goals are long term, that's going to depend on the type of risk you can take. So I'm going to take an example of myself. I'm 35 years old. So, you know, in the American definition, I'm halfway through my life. This is where a lot of people go through midlife crisis. Me personally, age is a number. And I think you only are old if you act old. And I feel like I'm just getting started. Like I am just getting started. I finally have a lot of self education under my belt when it comes to just friendships, money, business. And this is just the beginning for me. That's how I look at my life. So when I view that and I view the investment possibilities for myself as a 35 year old, mother of three, my financial goals are I would like to leave a legacy for my children. I don't want my children to be trust fund babies, but I do want to have a couple things in place for each one of my children. It's important for me that once my children turn 18, that they have a piece of real estate that will be in their name. And that piece of real estate, my goal has always been a fourplex for each of those children, okay? So I have actually accomplished that goal already. We've, we've done more than that, but each of my kids have a fourplex for them to have. So now beyond that, that was my big goal. I, wanted, I just want to give that to them. Now I want to create major generational wealth. How do we add even more assets to that? And of course, create a plan on when those assets can be available for the kids because I do not want trust fund kids whatsoever. Ew, gross. Not saying that trust fund kids are gross. You might be a trust fund kid right now and your parents might've done it right. I know a lot of trust fund kids that just don't have any work ethic and they're very lazy and expect everything to be handed to them. That will not be my children. (laughs) They're gonna have to work for the assets (laughs) to be handed to them, okay? So, you know, beyond that, my goals are to really acquire a billion dollars in real estate. That's my goal. And so I got to take action every single day to make that happen. 
And my risk, okay, is I'm an aggressive investor. When you have a high risk tolerance, you're considered an aggressive investor. I have a high risk tolerance because I'm still young. That means I could lose it all tomorrow. Uh, Rebuke that in the name of Jesus, okay? That ain't gonna happen. I could lose it all tomorrow, but I still have enough time in my life to recoup that and then some. So that's how you know I can have a high risk tolerance because it's your time horizon. How long will it take for me to recoup those funds that I've invested? For me, I have a high income. So I can easily recoup the money, I have lots of ways that I make money so I can easily recoup that money if an investment were to go bad. Rebuke that in the name of Jesus as well. Okay, so you might be listening into this and you might go, Kayla, I am in my 50s and I have a lower income coming in, but it's a stable income and my short-term financial goals are I wanna be able to buy a house for my grandkids, my soon-to-be grandkids, okay? That might be your goal. So you know, okay, in order to make a large sum of cash right now, I can't go and dump my money into the stock market, which would be considered a safer investment because that is a long-term investment strategy. And if you need to recoup your money in five years or less and multiply it, let's just say you need to multiply it twice. Putting it into the market is going to not be a great strategy for you because you have a shorter financial goal. You need that money back quicker. So you're going to look for non-traditional ways of multiplying your money. And we're going to talk about that today, but you have to understand what your risk tolerance is. And the number one way to do that is say, how much access do I have to stable funds. How much access do you have to stable funds? So if you already have assets that cash flow for you, let's say you own a single property home. So it's just a one door and you own that and you don't live in it and it cash flows for you. Let's just say $300 a month. Okay. You have $300 a month plus the equity that's sitting in that house that you could potentially pull out line of credit on if you needed to. So I would say you could take more risk than the average person that doesn't have any assets at all because you have that to fall back on and you have income coming from that asset already. Okay. So you get to decide right now, write this down on a scale of aggressive to soft. A soft investor would be, I I can't take any risk. I mean, you're talking to somebody that is in their 70s, doesn't have a lot of time to recoup money. They need to take very, very, very safe investments if any investment is safe, okay? Let's just say that. So where would you be on that scale? There's a middle one. I don't know. Let's make it up. Let's just say I'm a mid-scale investor. I don't know. (laughs) I'm an aggressive one. So you'll hear me talk a lot about aggressive investment opportunities because that's what I'm excited about. That's what I know more about. And that's how I increase my net worth. So an aggressive investor, you can write this down, maximizes returns using a high degree of risk. The investments that an aggressive investor makes really focus on capital appreciation over income. They're looking to really, they put a dollar in, they want to get $2 back. They really want that stretch. And for me, I'm all, you'll see, that's what I'm looking for. That's why I love real estate funds, highly focused on capital appreciation. Let's talk about all the different asset classes that you could go in. And we're going to start from low risk to a higher risk investment. So one example of a low risk asset to invest in is cash equivalents. So these are your treasury bills, guaranteed investment certificates, and money market funds. 
The other lower risk asset class is a fixed income. This is an investment that pays a fixed amount back to you. So you lend money to an entity and they pay you a fixed amount back that includes interest on your original loan until the initial investment is paid back to you. These are government and corporate bonds. Those are really the most common type. I actually have an opportunity coming up for those of you that are interested in investing in corporate bonds or government bonds. I have a friend, he's actually coming on the podcast and he's building community housing in an awesome area and it's all backed by the government. So you buy government bonds and it helps these people build homes for people who are on a fixed income. Actually, it's a, it's a really cool opportunity. So you can always reach out to me on Instagram and ask more about it. Okay, now we're moving up. We're going from low risk. We're going to talk about medium to higher risk things now. Now, this could be equities. So this is when you own shares in a company and the company decides to pay you a dividend. And a dividend is a distribution of the company's earnings that go out to its shareholders. Uh, Most of the ones that I'm invested in pay out on a quarterly or annual basis. So that's one way you can make money with equities. The second way you can make money with equities is if you sell your shares for more than what you originally bought them for. I personally have never done that with any of my private capital that I've deployed into companies. I just take the dividends and hope for the exit to a bigger, bigger name very, very soon. (laughs) Okay. This is a riskier investment because the market is very volatile. You could, you know, invest in a company that has great numbers and everything's awesome about it. And then a recession hits and people aren't buying as much of this product anymore. And so, you know, the company's evaluation goes down, 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 down. You're seeing that happen in the stock market right now. So yeah, equities are more risky. If you can invest in a company that, this is kind of my philosophy. I invest in companies with and gain equity. If I believe it's a company that I can help grow tremendously using my influential platform, that's one thing that it has to have. And also it needs to be ahead of its time, but not too much ahead of its time when it comes to a trending product or service. That's kind of my philosophy on that. Another asset class is commodities. So these are basic goods that can be transformed into other goods. So think about your precious metals, your gold, your silver, energy resources, oil, gas. And the other thing there is agriculture too. So food. (laughs) And the returns here are based on supply and demand. So Chase and I got super into oil. You guys have heard one of the stories about oil, that we got super into oil for a while, kind of like felt almost like gambling because it can kind of be addictive with investing in energy resources because it's feast or famine. Uh, So when the oil game is good, (laughs) oil people get richer. When the oil game is bad, people are going bankrupt. So it's very volatile. That's the type of money you have to be willing to go, hey, I might never see you again. So I recommend if you have a very low risk tolerance, not to go after things like this. But again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just sharing with you the things that I've learned over my years of investing and learning. And I just want to teach all of you how to do this. Alternative investments are real estate, your cryptocurrencies, and that's also including commodities. Okay. So these are, that's your alternative investment class. And in this you're going to be a lot higher risk. And also the higher risk can come into play because a lot of these things are not liquid assets. So with real estate, I can't go and turn it into cash if I need cash tomorrow because the market, I might have to, if I sell something, it might take eight months to a year to sell that property. And that means I don't have any of that cash I needed. I can't just pull it out. With gold and silver, 
just depending on what the market is, you can sell uh, for more than what you bought it for at a certain amount of time. So you, and instantly you can just sell it. <laughs> so um, yeah, so that will also depend on how a liquid you need your investment to be. I highly recommend not investing in real estate if you can't afford to lose, like to not see that money for five to seven years. Don't do it. Okay, Whew. I get out of breath talking about this stuff because I get so excited. I get so excited for you. I think we went over all of the different types of asset classes that there are compared to or in ranging from the low risk to the higher risk investments. And your job now is to understand, okay, where am I? Would I consider myself an aggressive investor depending on your time horizon, right? How much time do you have to recoup that initial investment? And are you okay with that money being illiquid, meaning I cannot grab it out for its original pricing for how long? How long can you afford to be without that money? If you have access to a stable income, stable funds, or if you're a business owner, right? I have a lot of entrepreneurs, mostly all entrepreneurs that are listening in. You have access to just create more and more streams of income. You're going to consider yourself more of an aggressive investor because you can just say, oh, I'll sell a different type of product. I'll open up more slots in this thing. I'll do X, Y, and Z to make more money. That's how entrepreneurs think. We never let lack of funds be the reason why we're not going to invest in something. We just go, oh, I'm just going to figure out another 10 ways to make money today because that's the way that our brains work. So amazing. So figure out what your risk tolerance is. Start creating a plan for your short-term financial goals, your long-term financial goals. Like I said, with me, my short-term financial goals are, are accomplished because you know, my, I can't believe my oldest is going to be 18 in five years, but that, that goal has already been done. And it's so freeing because now it's fun. I'm like, okay, what, what, what can I do? What can I create? And I come from a very different place when it comes to investing. And I know my, probably my short-term vision goals are going to become bigger and bigger. The more that I play in this world and talk about this world with all of you and have all of you expand my mind to what's possible as well. But You know, it comes from that place of first setting the goal, hitting a short-term goal, and then working every single day towards your long-term financial goal. All right. I love all of you so much. Thanks for listening in. Send in any questions on Instagram or comment below if you're wanting anything to be spelled out more. I'm also going to be bringing on experts that have different views that are, you know, the lower risk investors. You can also hear their mindset. Because there's not one, like Kayla's way isn't the right way for you. Your way is the right way for you. You just have to expand your mindset and keep an open mind. Really what's possible for you as an investor. See you next time.